If you don't have one of these tables, get one. They are great for moving things around by yourself. you guys out of the way so I'm going to be making a little carrier for an air conditioner so I can change my air conditioner out. So I had to get this over here out of the way. Excuse me, excuse me. things around on a table. I like to put something to kind of cushion the blow in case it hits and dings. This is a piece of, uh, it's actually a piece of uh, ambulance patient mover. Big slick piece of plastic that we would put under a patient and slide them from bed to bed. It got beat up one time so I took it home and made it into little Things like this, so now it's a machine mover. All right, let's see if I can do this. I've got it sitting where it's going to kind of go into this little groove here on the table and allow me to push it on over. I got my fingers out of the way. take that off. I stoned the table by the way before I started this. Now when you put things on a planer See how it's wobbly? There's a couple of things you need to do. You know, you got a bunch of holes here and T-slots and where you place it's kind of important. You always plane the top of a table first. And this will become the reference surface for the rest of the machining job. Now, I know this is bowed. These ends droop. So what you do is you place one, two, three blocks on each side, all four corners. And then you measure from this surface to this surface and get them all the same. And when you do that, that means that this surface here and this surface here will be, have the least amount of metal taken off. Because that's our reference point. We know it's bowed, so out here in the middle we're going to take eight thousandths. And hopefully we only need to take about a couple thousandths down here. Now it's not so important on the top of this, 
because this is the only surface that you ever reference from for going up. But taking more metal on the bottom means we have to take more relief metal in other places. So this is the easy way to do it. And what I do to adjust this point here is move the position of this one, two, three block. Because this is bent, if I move it this way, it changes this, this distance here. So once I get the side pieces mounted and the end pieces, then I'll start adjusting the position of these blocks. These are handy little gadgets. These fit into this one inch hole and I use this to align it and keep the force from moving. The only thing holding it down will be a clamp stop block here and one on the other end. So when you're setting up, you want to make sure you've got these screws to where they can touch. Or you get to redo it all over again. I hate doing things twice. But sometimes you have to. That'll work well. Two more. I made a little quick down and dirty tool here for measuring side to side on my table. On this surface, it doesn't matter this, this direction because all we're doing is planing off this flat top. When we get to the other side, when we start doing the, the bottom and the dovetails, that's where we have to be in line with the machine. Okay, so now we've got it where it can't go this way. Need to get some parts for down here. Because on a planer and a shaper, all the force goes this way. So I want something down here to resist that force. I don't use one with these screws because frankly it can move a little bit and I don't want it to be backing off all the time. So I want something solid. And then you push your... So now, you can't go this way. You can't go sideways. And it's so dang heavy it's not going to go up with the little bit of force that we're going to put on there. Now here's the... Can y'all see? Pay attention. Move this over here. Now, 
So I was saying these will resist lateral movement. This will resist longitudinal movement with this stop here. So the only thing I have left to do is get these four corners equal. So I don't take off too much down here and nothing up here. I want these to be in the same plane. Because we're going to get rid of the 8,000th bow here. I look to hopefully just take 10 thousandths off the whole thing. And to do that, this is the quick and simple Pakistani truck method. Actually, we used it here a lot too. On a table like this, this is just wonderful. Let's get it down here. I can adjust the height. You know, I don't have to have it to the exact thousands, but you can get real close with a sharp one of these. The ones they use with the bent wire and the, with too much spring, I'm not really sure about. But this one, you can see when it just starts to scratch the surface. Those are pretty close. You kind of do it in steps. And because this is a machine surface table, I know it's accurate. And you can see on this table, see the little lines right here? That tells me when it starts getting inaccurate. But we're in great shape here. Gosh, we're close. Anything, I think this one's a little high. Just for the heck of it, let's get another measuring instrument and see how far off it was. Zero. That, got, that is one thousandth difference over here than here. It's pretty close with a mechanical scribe, wouldn't you think? Let's go see the other side. That's a zero. And that's a one thousandth there. Need to raise that up. Let's see if moving this block down will do that. That's at zero. Can y'all see that? Zero. And zero. So we're good there. Even though this is heavy as all get out, dead blow won't hurt a bit here. Sounds pretty pretty tight to me. One and a half. Zero. Let's 
make it come up one more time. And we're ready to plane. Which will be tomorrow. So I'm too tired to do this tonight. But we'll get the planer set up. Be right back. Well, as you can see by the change of shirt, it's the next day. Going over a final setup on getting this table as close to its as made size and position on this table as I can. And basically to recap, we know from putting it on the surface plate that this table is bowed. It's higher in the middle than it is on both ends. And that's because people over the years putting T-bolts in this, tightening them, and it doesn't have to be malicious, just a lot of years. It peens the underside of this slot and it stretches the top of this forcing the ends to droop. It's eight thousandths of an inch off. So what we do is these keep it from going sideways. This is an end stop and I have one, two, three blocks under each corner. And because it's bowed, where I put the one, two, three block on the side, if I follow that curve, it changes the elevation out here on this point. So I can move these blocks individually, get them close, of which I have. This is a uh, down and dirty way of doing it. And I've gone through all four corners now. Check this out, everything's fine. There's one thing I didn't show you earlier. This top is the first surface you plane. But since it's already been manufactured and I'm just touching it up, I want to try to keep all the other geometries the same. This side and this side are nine degree angles to this top. So when I am adjusting the angle here, I want to make sure I don't screw this up. And so what I do is I use an angle plate. These are scraped angle plates. And I put it up here against the side. Then I take a strong light and I get behind it and I look down there and I can see absolutely no light coming down that side. I also put a feeler gauge earlier. Can't see it. This is another angle plate. And it's perfect too. These are cool little lights. Got it at uh, Lowe's. I think it's like $22. Angle magnetic. And it's got a little single bulb on the end. Goes through batteries pretty bad though. Goes through batteries like Amber Heard goes through money. Arr! This is better than cardiac rehab. One of the things that I need to do is put a chamfer down here on this edge. Can you see? This edge right here. The tool's going to hit here and it'll tear little pieces of the um, material out as it hits on cast iron. So you always put your bevel here.
doesn't have to be a big bevel because basically these ends are just barely going to get grazed. Out here in the middle is where we should be take off maybe ten thousandths. All right. Just put it on like this for right now because later on we're going to adjust the angle of this blade. For stuff like this I put it almost flat. Well, I got to get down here to this. The other things I do over here is this head can be disabled by turning off this valve right here. So I don't need this thing clacking when it's not being used. I'm going to lower this down. I hear Don's truck. Got to do the gate again. Forgot to do the gate. Rotary converter. Daddy Pooh. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you. Cindy needed to go to the HEB. And, oh, six, you brought Don too. They, they charge six dollars for a twelve pack of HEB. You can't get things. Is that here. what they are? No, I, it was just the only place. Tell her she's encouraging you. He says That's he only does one. one a day. One a day. One I don't day. know if I buy that. I don't I know, know if I buy I that. How many of those have I bought since the heart attack? I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. Mm. I have no idea. You go get yours. So I don't know. I'll put it in there. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. Say hi to the peeps, Don. Hey, peeps. You just started? It started. Ramping her down.
I've rebuilt two that weren't. Yeah. Top shelf of the refrigerator. <laughs> Put it in gear, it would help. Stayed in the same place? Yeah. That was taking a long time. Why didn't you say something? I thought you were polishing the edge. You would thought what? I thought you were polishing that edge. I'm not polishing no head. Edge. Moved it over manually to skip that groove. Yeah. Forgot to put it back in gear. It's pretty consistent. This way. So far, so good. Here's the first pass. Remarkably the same across. Same down here too. something. I know I'm going to get 10,000 comments. I wish I could get 10,000 comments, <laughs> Don. Yeah, you know, that'd be cool. Good. That'd help the old channel out a lot. So everybody do 2,000 comments. All Okay? That's only take five of you. Anyway, this is a very expensive casting. I'm not really sure, but I think it's over $1,000 to get a new one. 
I don't want to spend a thousand dollars more on this thing. So I take my time. I go down very, very slow. I don't throw the thing off. I could turn this machine up another 200% easy. And we could move some metal, but that's not the purpose here. I'm trying to get 10 thousandths of an inch off of this, and I got all day long. I'd rather spend two days than have to buy another top. But you need to just get a scrap piece of metal one day and show them what it'll do. Oh, we'll do that someday. Heck, cost of metal nowadays. Nothing scrap. Nothing scrap. But that's why I'm not going farther. And also, everybody tells me, well, shorten your stroke up. You don't need all that overhang. Well, maybe not so much on the back, but I like to have time for the head to settle down before it hits the workpiece. And over here, it kicks up a double kick, so I want it far away. Now, when I turn this over and start doing the dovetails, I have to have a bit that's on a 45 degree angle to get underneath there and so I have to pick this up every single time and let it go back over and drop it down. So I'll use the full table stroke on it. But right now I'm happy so you should be happy. Right Don? No? Uh -huh, it works man. Y'all should be happy I, I hit his bell. <laughs> I never wanted to steal the bell to start with. You love that bell. That's why I aggravated you to death with it. See, it works. step over it. When I turn it to the finished passes, it'll be almost flat going across it.
We're not taking six off of it. That's just the total I've taken off since I've started. See it's starting right there. And ending about right there. Side here is a little high. And I go one more time like that. And then do see. I'm on. We're down into the thousands. So now it's time to get the blade sharp. End of the thousands. Here's the thing. If you were to work this top just like it is with those little tiny ridges in it, you would have something that looks like my planer top. And you know why they do it this way? So you don't have stick slip and the parts ride on those little bitty tiny see how they've worn down over the years but they're still proud well these are just about as tiny as those are i just felt like there's some sharp spots i was just saying stone it lightly just oh well you get the edges and things like that but we're nearly to the last pass it's got a little bit over there it's wearing down this was tilted this way a little bit But we've got cutting on both ends just about perfect. I'm going to just stone a little bit and that'll be a finished surface. There's only two little dings. 
one right there and one right there I'm not going to take those out you start chasing dings pretty soon you run into a casting flaw and so why not all right we're going to take off another two thousandths and hopefully that'll clean everything up you have to play with the, the depth of cut, the length of cut, the step over, the angle of the blade. Back over some. You're taking shadows over here. This is all Don's fault again. Putting shadows. The behind you. I can have you having the shadows. Your lights are over there. The camera sees everything. There you go. I'm letting it go automatically across the whole surface instead of skipping them. Well, I got it all set up. I don't want to jinx anything. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Man, I'd have to take 40 more thousandths off to get it there. It ain't worth yeah, it. Yeah, no, it ain't worth it. Ain't worth it. This one. No, that looks good. Look at this. Good looking at Nice and consistent. Consider that a six, 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 six. Yep, feels good. All right. Uh, 